Once upon a time on the waters of the Ionian Sea, there was a Stoic philosopher traveling from Cassiopa to Brundisium. One night during the voyage, the sea grew violent and unforgiving, tossing the vessel about amongst the waves. The crew and passengers worked tirelessly, fighting against the storm that threatened to swallow them. In this chaos, the Stoic philosopher, a man of great renown in Athens, became the focus of a few of the passengers. As the world turned upside down, and the elements themselves seemed to conspire against them, they sought his wisdom, his courage unshaken by the storm. Instead, what they found was a man, pale and drawn, his stoic calm replaced by the unmistakable signs of fear. However, while others screamed in fear and panicked, he was silent in contrast. It was a sight that puzzled and intrigued some of the other passengers. Why was it that this philosopher showed signs of fear, yet at the same time did not rush around or scream? The storm passed, the journey continued, and as Brundisium neared, a man approached the philosopher to ask why he showed fear, despite his stoic training. In a moment of quiet reflection, the philosopher shared the teachings of the Stoics, pulling from his little bag the fifth book of the Discourses by the philosopher Epictetus. He spoke of the two stages of fear. The first is involuntary fear, a natural response to unexpected threats, distinguishing the wise from the foolish, not by the presence of fear, but by their reaction to it. The wise man, he explained, sees beyond the initial terror, understanding that these visions of fear are but illusions, unworthy of assent. The second stage is whether or not we allow that fear to override our ability to make reasoned choices. The wise person has the ability to choose reason as a guide for their behavior, rejecting fear's ability to control our behavior. The foolish person allows fear to flow through them and allows it to guide their actions. The book by Epictetus contained the following passage. The mental visions, which the philosophers call impressions or fantasies, by which the mind of man on the very first appearance of an object is impelled to the perception of the object, are neither voluntary nor controlled by the will, but through a certain power of their own, they force their recognition upon men. But the expressions of assent, which they call sukkatathasayas, by which these visions are recognized, are voluntary and subject to man's will. Therefore, when some terrifying sound, either from heaven or from a falling building, or as a sudden announcement of some danger, or anything else of that kind occurs, even the mind of a wise man must necessarily be disturbed, must shrink, and feel alarm not from a preconceived idea of any danger, but from certain swift and unexpected attacks, which forestall the power of the mind and of reason. Presently, however, the wise man does not approve such fantasies, that is to say, such terrifying mental visions. To quote the Greek, he does not consent to them, nor confirm them, but he rejects and scorns them, nor does he see in them anything that ought to excite fear. And they say that there is this difference between the mind of a foolish man and that of a wise man, that the foolish man thinks that such visions are in fact as dreadful and terrifying as they appear at the original impact of them on his mind, and by his assent he approves of such ideas as if they were rightly to be feared, and confirms them. For prosepidoxazai is the word which the Stoics use in their discourses on the subject. But the wise man, after being affected for a short time, and slightly in his color and expression, does not assent, but retains the steadfastness and strength of the opinion which he has always had about visions of this kind, namely that they are in no wise to be feared, but excite terror by a false appearance, and vain alarms. The value of Stoicism, then, is found in what follows these initial impressions. While the foolish person submits to them, and accepts these fears as reality, the wise person questions and rejects them. The wise will choose the path of reason, preventing their behavior from being controlled by emotion, 